In 1859, the most violent solar storm ever recorded hit Earth. If the same thing were to happen today, our cities, our buildings, everything that operates on the electric grid, so essentially our whole society, would completely shut down. You know back then, there was damage to the telegraph networks. Oh come on, you're exaggerating the gloom and doom. Such sensationalism, it might sound like gratuitous sensationalism, but from a technical scientific point of view, the scenario is totally plausible. The cause of the massive blackout wouldn't be a supervolcano erupting, nor would it be a gigantic earthquake, but rather the thing that allows us to live every day, the sun. In 1859, as I said before, the most intensely powerful geomagnetic storm ever recorded the Carrington event occurred. An event like this, if it were to happen today, and science indeed tells us that one will occur in the future, could really shut down everything, or just about everything we rely on. Today in this video, we want to tell you exactly what a geomagnetic storm is, and have a detailed look at what one might do to our technology, including satellites, smartphones, and also, in a more general way, to the entire power grid. Basically, we could be left in the dark, albeit centuries from now. At this point, I'll hand over to our friend, the astrophysicist Matteo Miluzio from Who's Afraid of the Dark, a project whose name was inspired by the very darkness we'd find ourselves in if another Carrington event occurred. So let's start off by explaining what a solar storm is. The sun's got this huge magnetic field, and sometimes in certain areas of this magnetic field, magnetic energy builds up a massive amount of energy, akin to the equivalent of billions of atomic bombs. All this energy can be released in one fell swoop, pretty much like when we let go of a spring. When that happens, the sun can blast a huge amount of charged particles into space at super high speeds, a phenomenon that astronomers call a coronal mass ejection, which is just a fancy term for a solar storm. Now, what happens if one of these coronal mass ejections reaches our planet? Well, it depends. The Earth, in fact, has its own protection against these astronomical phenomena, which is its magnetic field, and it kind of acts like a huge cosmic shield. When Earth's magnetic shield is disturbed by one of these intense solar eruptions, that's precisely when you get a geomagnetic storm. If the stream of particles coming from the Sun is more or less weak in intensity, our shield can protect us, and the most that can happen is that we'll see stunning polar auroras. It's when the stream is strong that the problem arises. When that's the case, the Earth's magnetic shield is affected, and the effects can go way beyond simply producing polar auroras. The most powerful storm ever recorded, known as the Carrington event, struck way back in the year 1859. But it was 1859, and back then the worst that could happen was damage to the telegraph network and the appearance of auroras, which were even seen all the way down in the tropics, in the Caribbean. But today, guys, if something like that happened, it would literally be a disaster of catastrophic proportions. A storm, such as the Carrington event, could utterly wipe out power grids, telecom networks, and water supply and transportation systems in many parts of the world. For instance, there would be widespread blackouts in a great number of countries, but not the typical 30-minute power outages that we might be used to. We're talking about extensive blackouts that could potentially last for months or even years. The light bulbs, appliances, computers and smartphones that we use every single day would be rendered completely useless. No internet, no phone, even the food in our fridges would go bad, as would what the supermarkets have in cold storage. Healthcare in hospitals would grind to a halt and banks too would be forced to close. The global economy and financial system would collapse. Water supply system pumps would stop working, leaving our cities without running water. Telecommunications would pretty much become impossible. Satellites would fail as their electronics fried, and those in low orbit would come crashing down to Earth, burning up in the atmosphere. On the flip side though, absolutely gorgeous auroras would appear across the globe. But how exactly does a solar storm cause all this chaos? Well, it would actually be the fault of the stream of charged particles that the sun has shot towards us in a coronal mass ejection. The satellites would be hit directly by this stream of particles, putting pretty much all their electronic components out of action. The other damage would essentially arise from the disruption to our planet's magnetic field. 
In physics, in fact, a changing magnetic field actually generates electric currents, which are known as induced currents. So, the significant disturbance in the Earth's magnetic field, which would inevitably be caused by a powerful solar storm, would induce enormous currents in the Earth's crust. These currents would flow along all metallic distribution networks, completely destroying them. So, electrical wires, water pipes and oil and gas pipelines, in addition to the underwater cables essential to the Internet, would all be damaged. Only half a day would need to pass before billions of people would be left without electricity, without water and without any means of communication. The few estimates that have been made have reached truly jaw-dropping conclusions because we're talking about millions of victims worldwide, global damages in the tens of trillions of dollars and a time frame of over 10 years to fix all the wrecked networks. So it would without a doubt be the most catastrophic natural disaster in our history. We've understood what kind of havoc the most intense geomagnetic storm ever recorded would wreak in today's world. But the question is, what can we do to defend ourselves against possible future harm? Unfortunately, we're currently rather ill-equipped to deal with a disaster of this nature, but the good news is that events of this kind are, after all, rare. They actually happen a couple of times a century. Why? Because, you see, they can only ever occur if the coronal mass ejection emanating from the sun is headed straight in Earth's direction. But if we really wanted to minimize the damage, we'd basically have to do two things, both of which are extremely challenging. The first thing would be to protect all our existing infrastructure for electricity and communications, and I mean all of it. But in reality, the technology to do so is pretty much still at a conceptual or planning stage. But the absolute most important thing, and it's a topic that comes up a lot here on Geopop, is disaster preparedness and prevention. We really have to learn to see these things coming way ahead of time, so we can get ready for them. How? Well, with science and our telescopes. For example, today we already have a number of them keeping an eye on our star non-stop, and it's thanks to their data and discoveries, which will be ongoing, that we'll get to understand the Sun's complex dynamics even better. Some story, huh? So, the bottom line is, first and foremost, that it's crystal clear that we're completely dependent on electricity and the power grid. We take electrical power for granted every single day, but if we lost it, we'd be in deep trouble. Then there's a second message, and it's actually something we tell you all the time. The second message is that nature's power is on a whole other level compared to what we humans can wield. We're nothing but little ants in comparison. In a lot of cases, particularly with big events, we manage to pull something off. For instance, regarding volcanic eruptions, earthquakes and floods, we can deploy disaster preparedness and prevention strategies. In this particular case though, with geomagnetic storms, we're still behind the eight ball. We don't have much in the way of tools to prevent them, but fortunately, we've got ongoing scientific research, which in my opinion, will probably lead us to the discovery of effective solutions for these kinds of challenges too. I'm personally really optimistic. Thanks so much for watching this video all the way to the end. A big thanks to Who's Afraid of the Dark. I'll catch you next time right here on Geopop Everyday Science.